When we talk about chickens, most of us would instantly think of the food we eat. Oh, I love drumstick. That chicken wing looks so nice. If you want to work out and gain some muscles, you'd better eat more chicken breasts. And chickens come in different shapes and sizes onto our dinner table, and they taste quite different as well. But despite all that, chicken is still a bird, and birds can fly, right? Hello, I'm Adam. Sometimes when we see birds fly in the sky, they spark our imaginations. Wow, can you imagine I have a pair of wings? Then I can fly in the sky just like those birds. Then I would be completely free. It might seem to be common sense that birds can fly because they have wings. But penguins and emus, they have wings. They cannot fly. So it turns out, wings are just a tool to help birds to utilize the four forces that flying requires. Weight, lift, drag, and thrust. Everybody has weight. Every object has weight. It pushes us down onto the ground. But lift works in a different direction. It lifts us into the air. In order to fly, you need thrust, which pushes you forward. And when you are flying, you will definitely experience drag. It will slow you down until you stop. In order to fly, only have wings is not going to be enough. Birds also need to have many other physical features to help them take full advantage of the four forces. For those birds that can fly, they generally have long wings. Their wingspans are going to be much, much greater than the width of their bodies. They also have strong but lightweight feathers attached to their wings, which would increase the width of their wings without adding too much to their general weight. If you look at a bird's body, they are generally aerodynamic which would help them to reduce the drag in the air significantly. By adjusting their bodies in the air differently, they can change the dynamics of those four forces in their favor, which would allow them to do pretty much whatever they want in the air. These four forces are not exclusive to birds, but rather, they can be applied to anything and help things fly. For example, a frisbee. A frisbee is a plate. It doesn't have wings, but how can it fly? Well, it turns out, we are throwing it out, your arm, is giving it a lot of thrust, and its plate-shaped body would help it to generate enough lift in the air which would surpass the weight it has to stay in the air. And of course, everything that flies would experience drag, and drag would eventually bring the free speed down. We humans benefit from those four forces as well. That's why we have airplanes and helicopters. Of course, they don't fly exactly like birds, but they got the job done, don't they? So what went so wrong that even made chickens forget how to fly? Well, it turns out, ratio really matters. Yeah, chickens have wings and feathers, but their feathers are not that helpful. And also their wings are too short. If you look at their bodies, their bodies are too bulky and not that aerodynamic. If you combine all of those elements, you can clearly see that everything is against them, right? They have too much weight. They can't generate enough lift in the air. And because their bodies are too bulky, they would experience a lot of drag during flights. So how did chickens become like this? Well, the fact is, they've always been like this. You see, the ancestor of chickens is a game bird called the jungle fowl. Jungle fowls, just like its name suggests, they live in the jungles. They feed on the small insects and the seeds that they can find on the ground. And whenever they experience danger, they would just use their wings to help them to burst into the air, try to jump as far and as high as possible to avoid the potential predators. And it has been working out very, very well for them. So there's no real need for them to fly long distances just to survive. They can just be in the jungle and be fine. And of course, because of this, when the ancient humans started to domesticate animals, jungle fowls became the perfect candidate because they don't fly away. You can just keep them in with some fences and they're quite big compared to other birds. So the return on investment ratio is pretty good. So that's how after generations after generations, we have chickens. Throughout history, 
chickens have not changed that much. Not until around 70 years ago. Have a look at this picture. I do believe it would help you to understand how much chickens have changed in recent years. And how all of this happened was quite interesting. Back in 1948, a company called the Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, which was the biggest supermarket back then in America, hosted a contest. And the premise of this contest was quite simple. They wanted to figure out the secret sauce that would help them to raise the chicken of tomorrow. The A&P food stores, the nation's largest poultry retailers, offered to sponsor a contest for the development of superior meat-type chickens. A national committee was full of the program, the chicken of tomorrow. A broad-breasted bird with bigger drumsticks, plumper thighs, and layers of white meat, like the wax model on the right. The success of the contest proves conclusively that it is possible to breed chickens with superior meat type characteristics. He predicted widespread production of superior meat type chickens within the next few years. And what is the chicken of tomorrow? Well, a chicken of tomorrow would grow much faster and much bigger compared to a normal chicken, which means the cost to raise a chicken would be much lower and the return on the investment would be much bigger. And the contest was a success. The winning chicken not only fulfilled both of the premises, it also had much less feather, which means it would be much easier to remove them during slaughtering. In the next decade of the contest, the winning chicken went national in America and the winning company was cranking out chickens like crazy until Nelson Rockefeller took notice of it. He bought the company and brought the company global. And the research and development didn't stop there. Cutting edge bioengineering technologies went into research and figuring out how to continue the process and making chickens grow even faster and grow much bigger. That's why after a couple of decades later, we have the chickens we have now. And the research is not stopping. As a matter of fact, it's actually speeding up. Now, scientists are trying to figure out the best way to raise heat-resistant chicken. Just to make sure that we will still have chickens to eat, even if the climate change gets too bad. So, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? I don't really have an opinion. What do you think? If you want to share your opinion, please leave a comment down below and I will read all of them. And also, if you like the videos I make, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. And I'll see you very soon.